a 27% increase in feed efficiency, a reduction in waste, health monitoring and labor improvements. Those aren't too good to be true. They're limit feeding. Kansas State University has been studying the practice as a way to improve profitability. Our limit feeding program system basically uh, on day of arrival we feed 1% of body weight with long stem hay. The second day we start this diet at 1% of body weight and according to what they eat we step them up 0.25% of body weight per day. By day five they're at 2.2% of their body weight. Blasi says that's the sweet spot for 500 to 700 pound calves. At five days, those cattle are basically at the diet they're fed. And then we increase the dry matter allotted to them every two weeks according to their calculated daily gains. The animal scientist says, think of it as a Las Vegas buffet compared to a Camp Pendleton diet. It has more benefits than just better cost of gains. If the calves are not hungry, they will not come to the bunk. And in most cases, in a restricted environment, all calves should be hungry. And so we're able to do a better job of detecting calves that may not want to eat because of some issue that we're not seeing directly. The researchers will analyze carcass data to get a full picture of limit feeding's impact on beef quality and yield. But past studies show no effect on later feeding performance. So it, it's a practice that's been around, and especially in this drought environment, uh, is, is an ideal management strategy for a lot of our operations that are forced to go out and purchase feed at elevated prices. Blossie spoke as part of the Feeding Quality Forum this year. I'm Bob Cervera.